It's 7 o'clock, so I will call the meeting to order. Um, just a brief comment. We're holding this meeting for the first time in South Woodstock, uh, just to make it a little more convenient for you all to participate. It's great that you're all here and that precisely the number of people over which we have chairs have shown up. That is better planning than we have in the <coughs> town hall. So thank you for participating. This is our um, agenda. Um, I'll give you a minute to quickly look at it. We try <coughs> to do things electronically. Everything that you see here on the screen will be posted. It normally would be posted to the website in advance, but it will be posted uh, by tomorrow morning if so you don't have to copy things down if you want to get a copy online tomorrow on our website. Um, are there any additions or deletions? Print it out, you're still on a tree. But we're <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's all the material, yeah. No, we're trying to be as electronic as we can. So. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay. Um, we typically start with citizen comments um, on any topic, and then we also have just sort of added a section, which we've never done before, but figuring since we're here that the economic development opportunities here might be different from uh, the village and the central part of town and the rest of the town. So we thought we would just take some time for anyone, if you want to just talk briefly about ideas for advancing the South Woodstock economy. So if you have comments uh, first on anything other than that, um, we take citizen comments now, and then we'll turn to that. Jeff? Yeah, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to mention that I don't think you folks have taken a vote yet on your proposed changes. Has that been completely approved? And I think we did at the last meeting, and then we, we shared that with the select board, and the select board said that they did not need to approve it. <coughs> they didn't object to it, and they said they only needed to approve funding. I, I was under the impression that we were still going to have an opportunity to discuss it further? That well, you know, no, no. We are discussing today, continuing to discuss the schedule. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, if, and if, if there are, we're, conti we're continuing to discuss the schedule today. Um, I, so I suppose, you know, because of the way we've had the discussion, I suppose you could, we could debate the fine lines of what exactly we voted on and, and what we did. Let's well, just see if... Well, when it comes to schedule, um, you know, your decision to hold major anything over $5,000 just once a year, uh, proposals uh, once a year, is that included in schedule or is that a done deal? The once a year, in my view, was voted on and agreed upon. When, when, we, when that once a year happens, there's been a suggestion that we give people a little bit more time this year to get their proposals in. So we're going to discuss that tonight. But the once a year was, uh, I mean, uh, it was pretty clearly voted on. And Decided. And we voted on the 5,000 versus 10,000. And, and, and we also said it was a one year test. So that we will reconsider it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Okay. Any other comments or questions? Uh, okay, great. So, continuing with sort of open discussion, um, does anyone have any thoughts or comments uh, about economic development, particularly in South Woodstock, that um, yeah, Dave. John, Dave Brown, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, two events have happened in South Woodstock recently, relatively recently, that puts South Woodstock on the map economically. One is the revitalization of the Woodstock, uh, the South Woodstock Country Store. And if you haven't been to it, you owe yourself that opportunity. It's a great place. A lot of people go there uh, for great food and uh, general camaraderie. Um, it's what a it's what a general store should be, and also uh, a year or so ago, uh, South Woodstock uh, was uh, wired with uh, fiber optic internet everywhere except the fire station, um, uh, and uh, so so that connectivity has really uh, helped uh, economically in, in this part of the world. So those two things. Can I, I want to ask David a question. What percentage of the homes have, have requested EC5 wiring? If you'd asked me that uh, an hour ago, I might have been able to give you an answer. Right. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't know the I don't know the number, but it is uh, it is a fairly high percentage. Um, so. 
other um, other comments or questions? Yeah. Um, I've lived in South Woodstock for a long time, and um, always had lots of old older people my age and older, and I mean that was okay, <laughs> but. Um, now there are lots of young people, and there was just an activity, which we've never had before, up at the um, up here at the barn, and there were a couple of bands there, and twinkling lights inside, and lots of people um, telling stories. It was just great, and it was just an evening of fun, and um, so that was pretty exciting, um, and to see how many young people were there was great. So a lot of people, a lot of young people have moved into the village and into the area, I think. Um, and it's just made South Woodstock a whole lot more vibrant place. Um, and I have a son who w was raised here, lived in California for a long time, got married, had a little girl, came back here five years ago. And at the end of, I think, year three, they said, we're going back to California, this is really boring, there are no kids here, can't get involved. And um, Pridham, I s happened to see him going into the post office and I told him and he said, no, 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 that's not going to happen. I said, yes it is, they're leaving this summer. And he said, don't worry. And I was sitting out on the back deck with my husband later that afternoon and he came over and he said, guess what? And I said, what? And he said, we're not moving. And I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> he said, I just spent three hours with Pridham. He said, Pridham came to talk to me, told me what he was going to do with the town, told me about his kids, wants me to meet his kids. And now this community is just thriving with young people and all doing things, all very involved. And surprised they're not here tonight. But um, Where is your son living? Right next door to where we live, right here in the village. And... Um, it's just a very exciting place to be for the first time <laughs> in my life, that, and I've been here a long time. So I think, you know, the way they revitalize the inn and have done that, it's always very busy, there's great music. We had a parade here on yeah. August 3rd yeah, that, that was, was great. spectacular. It was just wonderful. Oh. And fireworks that night at the pond, and they were the best fireworks I've ever been to in my life. I mean, mm. much better than Woodstock ever had. And just a lot of a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so, um, you know, I'm sure we could do more things, but we've done a lot already. Well, I don't know. By the way, just speaking <coughs> for myself, and I'm not really that aware. My kids are gone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that those of us who are in the, I live in the village on the green mm -hmm. are, are aware of that precise trend. I mean, we know obviously that you know Pridham is fixing things up yeah. and we come down here and so forth, but it'd be interesting to see whether there's an opportunity to just communicate that more to oh, the I folks wish. up north. Yeah. So I think the younger people, people, a lot of the younger they people They do know. Down okay, fine, yeah, it's just me. <laughs> Can I speak so. to that just slightly? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm not going to disagree with anything she said. Um, on the other hand, um, she obviously hasn't lived here that long. No, I came in 66. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you don't remember when there oh were yeah, parties? Oh yeah, when our kids were little. We, there were lots of little kids. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say. I think what has happened mm -hmm. is a lot of people in the community aged out, moved away, mm -hmm. whatever happened, and we wound up with a community that was in fact dying. Mm -hmm. um, people couldn't afford to live here. People didn't want to live here because, you know, there were no services, there were, you know, it was just not a great place to live anymore. And consequently, what's, what I think has actually happened here is we've returned to what we used to be. Um, and, you know, all it takes is money. And, and that's obviously, you know, your concern as, as an Economic Development Commission. Um, and somebody walked in, we got very, very lucky here. Somebody walked in with a pile of money and said, I want to fix it. I want to make it better. And that's what it takes sometimes. Well, and how is that going to fix it and make it better? Well, I think that she's right. I think bringing young people in, revitalizing the buildings, making things like the inn, um, you know, so that it actually meets codes and will be there 100 years from now, which it wasn't going to be. Uh, the store. Whether you like it or you don't like it as a material, the point is they've worked it, they've done it, and it's better um, logistically in many respects than it was before. Um, you know, I, I don't love everything they've done. 
I, I, there's a lot of things they've done I don't love. But I think they're right. I think, you know, the, the community was dying. There's no question in my mind. I mean, I've watched it go from a community where they had barn parties at Pierce's all the time yeah, yeah. to a community where we couldn't get enough people to keep our community club ahead. Yeah. Alive. You know, we just couldn't. And, and they have changed that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, all it takes is money. But it also takes a huge family. I mean, that's a big family. Right. There's a whole bunch of people in that family. And then a whole bunch of employees. And between those two things, they've been able to revitalize the community. I'm, I'm not saying everything's perfect. Please, please don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I do think it's better that we have people living here in the community, that we do have uh, young people coming into the community. Um, unfortunately, most of us are probably not going to be here forever. <laughs> and... Um, you know, I turned 60 this year, and, and I thought, oh, I don't like change. I really don't like change. I don't want to live here anymore. I don't like the change. And then all of a sudden, I woke up, and I went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I was probably them when I came back here. You know, I was, I was probably those young people when I came back here when I was, you know, in my teens and 20s. So... You know, people ask me why I stayed. I stayed because I made all my mistakes here, and everybody forgave me. So I think <laughs> possibly, possibly we all have to do the same thing uh, again. But yes, I think that that is good. really, really important. Other comments or questions? I'd like to ask a couple things because um, certainly Prinaman uh, and his family have invested a lot of money, and that's great. But there's still a very vibrant. Um, agricultural sector, so we have a number of sugar houses in South Woodstock that are really known all over the world for the quality of the maple syrup. And I'm not sure how many there are, uh, but I've been arguing with Canadians that I've met that we have the better maple syrup than they do. Uh, we do. And, uh, and there's some small dairy, but GMHA also is a major driver for the economy here, and we can't ignore that, and that uh, we shouldn't ignore it. So there's some so there's some diversity. It's not all just one it's one sector, and, and cheese, um, and that's very strong. Yeah, and, and cheese. And cheese, that's right. and cheese, and it wouldn't be logical or reasonable to depend on one family and their investment in the community to keep this community vibrant. But my my question to you then, given this feedback, is what, what is there something that an economic development commission can do to which we can't do alone? We need you to propose it or you to you know what would be the next thing. Why do you should mention that? So, well, let me just give other people. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, is there I'll a next? Is there a no, no? I, is there a no, next no. thing? Is there a project? Is there a, you know? Um, I think one of the things that just happened is they they started an organic farm. And they hired uh, this young girl who was very interested in farming. Kind of reminds me of what Ben did at the inn. Um, and she's done amazing things. I mean, I, I went to her the other day and just asked her, I said, hey, I have an organic garden, and this happened, and this happened, and she said, oh, come over anytime. It was just so refreshing, so opening, just, okay. yeah. Other yeah. Right. Yeah, so can I ask well, a question yeah, please. of the people here who are from here, from South Woodstock? I, from the, as an outsider, I, I, would, I will notice that um, the, I mean, from Woodstock, that, that here in South Woodstock, there are a lot of um, events. Events are kind of a, there are a lot of community mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. that are kind of surrounding the inn, but um, it seems like they have a good mu music program. Mm -hmm. They have consistent, uh, the fireworks, the parade, this barn party. Do you think that is a big, I mean, I, I wonder how much that has to do with it. I think it I think has a lot to do with it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're suggesting older perhaps we get some more more events. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I, I, but I think also question. events that are, I mean, I would, I, would, I would note that those events are primarily happening, um, that they, they are directed at the younger crowd. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not just... Um, well, we haven't really lost everything. It, you know, I mean, I went to the most wonderful thing this past summer, um, the uh, Historical Society, or the Academy, actually, um, did a, a marvelous thing in the cemetery. Um, and they got a bunch of people together to act out, you know, various members of the community mm -hmm. from past. I had the best time. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a beautiful day, which helped. But um, but I mean, we do still have. I think one thing that we have here in South Woodstock that maybe we don't have in other places um, is a really genuine 
sense of our history. And mm -hmm. my only fear in all of this is that we might lose that sense of history to so many people coming from outside who might or might not be interested in that history. And so it's very important to me, um, economically, yes, because I think it could be an economic driver, but I think it's really important to make sure that we don't lose that historical um, connection here in this community. This is, this is a very, very small place. Very small place. So if we're adding in the graveyard thing, what I would say, the common <coughs> thread would be, correct, please correct me if I'm misstating this, but things that are a little bit out of the ordinary, not your, well, not your normal event that happens. Yeah, every and that came from Green Mountain Perkins Academy. Yeah, it's the Academy. On the board the, yeah. for okay. a long time. And we always try to think of events that will bring people in. But I, I too, mm -hmm. Laura, thought that the, the um, cemetery event was incredible. I mean, I, I learned great. so much. My husband was in it, and but, you know, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, he was <laughs> one of the actors who act, pretended like he had just come up and was telling his story. But I think um, the board of directors at the um, academy really works hard to do that. I think we're, we're very lucky here. My observation, I've been here five years in South Woodstock, and it seems that the advertising for the events, and I haven't volunteered to do it, is underfunded and under, yeah. that we need to have more publicity for the rest of the community, right. for Woodstock and all. <coughs> we have the pancake breakfast coming up, they put a the fire engine may be downtown, but if fun, I don't know what the problem is, but maybe more money that would allow mm -hmm. us to advertise these items a little bit more could be helpful. Well, it costs $40 to have the, the posters at the end of the green, and we did that for two of the events. One was the, the um, cemetery event, and we had a lot of people for that. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot for us, which was maybe close to 40. I think you also have to be. So I, I just wanted to thank what you said about the, the older groups that have been in the, in the town for a long time trying to survive and that the agricultural type of, mm -hmm. of groups that are, are, are struggling in, in terms of, of whether it's sugaring or um, some of the other groups because we, we, we don't have much of a voice and I'm going to stutter, so. I don't have much of a voice, I don't have much money. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the one thing about the, um, it's, it's fine for, for some of these groups to have fireworks and whatnot, but it was um, disappointing that uh, we had to lock all of our animals in because one group wanted to have fireworks. Yes. All right, one, one last comment. I, we, we unfortunately have a really tight agenda, so I'm sorry. I don't, this isn't, doesn't have to be the end of the conversation, but for tonight, one, one more comment? Any, it seems that the GMHA is more vital, and, and I think there, did I read there's a new person at the head of yeah, it now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're changing over but that's around. an incredible focus mm -hmm. in the town, I think, that really contributes. It doesn't seem, when you say South Woodstock economic, economic development opportunities. I don't know what the opportunities are, but are they for housing that's more varied? And certainly the agricultural part and the sustainable part, and maybe some solar in investment would be great. And yeah. they, Earth, eat the fiber is fantastic too. Could I make one very specific suggestion? Sure. But, and then this is the last comment. <laughs> this isn't a co comment. This okay. is a suggestion. suggestion. Got it. Okay. And, and this is something comment. that you and uh, <coughs> I'm Beth. The Beth. Yes. I'm sorry. I never can remember your name, Beth. I apologize. It's funny because my, my employee's name is Beth. Um, anyway, um, many years ago, uh, when they created the program in Vermont with the little signs that directed you to businesses because you couldn't have billboards, um, several of the local businesses had them at the end of Route 106 on the green. And at some point, and I don't know what point it was, a decision was made in the town that they didn't want them at the end of the green. And, or at the, uh, at the side of the green, at the end of the road. And they moved them off the green and like to the edge of town. And when they did that, 
the Kedron Valley Inn lost 30%, overnight lost 30% of its walk-in business. I believe that it would be extremely important to businesses here in South Woodstock to have some kind of presence that says at the, right. end, of the, at the end of Route 106, right. where it hits the green, it would be nice to have a tasteful, okay, a tasteful and appropriate piece of signage which directs people to South right. Woodstock and South Woodstock businesses. Okay. And I think it would be really great. There's probably some ornery homeowner who might have taken that down. <laughs> 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 Actually, I live in their house. On the edge of green. No, 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 I understand. Okay. Julie. Actually, you're right because the, the, oh. the signs were right in front of the brick house uh, <laughs> just before you turned to make oh, like six. Right. 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 <laughs> I we didn't ask for them. I have no idea. The house started getting lived in because it was owned by the Woodstock Inn at that point. Right. All right. That's right. That's right. Anyway, uh, you're, still, your comment is noted. I don't have a dog in this fight. Okay. You may not have a dog in the fight, but I think it's important. No, no, no. I, I noted it down as an idea. Okay. sign on the side of your house. Any other comments? Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, knocked on this in other parts of Woodstock, so this is sort of a first. Um, I think the uh, coming up over the next couple of months and then continuing every other month for some period of time until we run out of funding, you know, the EDC accepts grants for economic development proposals. We have four priority areas, expanding housing and related services, marketing Woodstock, uh, which this, for example, that sign would fit under marketing Woodstock, I think. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, you know, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, uh, improving physical amenities uh, and, uh, and supporting a local business environment, which it might fit under. And I don't know that we've ever had a proposal, Sally, would, have we had, well, we had a request from GMHA, actually, yeah, which we declined. Which is not really well, marketing. Sorry? It was not marketing. Right, exactly. It didn't really fit our priorities. But, but one thing that, that any resident of Woodstock can do, including you, is to come forward with proposals. Our website talks about the criteria, and I, you know, that, could be a, that could be a proposal. I think um, what, I think yeah, what but, I would But there like could be other ideas as well, and that's the way, I think, in which yeah. what I'd South like Woodstock to see, can, What can I'd like it. to see happen is I'd like to see you guys <coughs> and Beth and the people who have some control over the situation um, tell us what would be acceptable, okay. and so that we could make an appropriate pr proposal. Isn't it the state? Yeah, yeah. well, let's not problem solve it tonight, but yeah. I, I, well, why don't we talk about that offline as to how to fit that idea right. into our yeah. process. But it also would go to the beautification. Well, yes, I was, I was about to say, I think part of uh, uh, one of the recommendations made by uh, Dubois and King in the along with the uh, recommendation was signage yeah. and how to do it tastefully, and I think when that subject comes up, we can address that. You know, that would be from, great. From everybody's <laughs> perspective. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah. along that same kind of a yeah. thing that she was just talking about, you all just mentioned, the signage, the, the, the folks that are coming to South Woodstock or think they're coming to South Woodstock, uh, will we'll start heading out 106. They get to the Woodstock Inns um, Resort and the... Um, the health club, and they say, oh my God, the road is falling apart. This must be going nowhere. You, you so they turn around, right at, right at the turnaround right there, and head back to town. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. it's true. It's it's happens all the time. Time. Well, I mean, the roads are, are not our... No, no, no. But no, but they don't know because where to go. Because, oh, because they don't know where to go. Because they don't know where to go. It's a signage question. Yeah. You're just reinforcing, I'm just reinforcing the signage issue. Got it. Okay. And I then, can't tell you how many yeah. phone calls I get yeah. from right there saying, I, I must have find. missed you. Right. 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 Yeah. And that's, where, that's where, the, where the phone service mm. cracks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, yeah. Right. yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you for that input. Um, let's can, let's take these ideas and, and we'll feather them in. But I also do want to say that proactively, over time, you can just come to us and say and ask that question: How can this idea be brought into the EDC's process? And we'll help you to figure that out. But we'll take these ideas. That'd be great. Okay. Um, next is approval of the minutes from September fifth. Are there any comments? The minutes were distributed. Any comments about the minutes? Hearing none, can we have a motion to approve them? Motion to approve. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Most okay. abstained. I wasn't there. Oh. 
Okay, let's note that Charlie has abstained. Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, all right, grant updates. So um, we started a process of reviewing grants. Uh, we have 49 grants that we've made since we started, and so we don't have a lot of time um, to do them, so this is going to feel a little bit rushed. We basically have a set of questions that we want to ask, um, and uh, which, which are these. Were the funds spent in the way they were, at, they were supposed to be spent when we approved the grant? Did the outcomes happen? Um, are there any metrics that justify whether the outcomes happened or not? And have, has the grant reduced the need for future funding? Because we, we don't want to be an <coughs> ongoing, recurring funder. We want to be an instigator. What's the word when you? It's catalyst. 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 A catalyst. Yeah. 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 So these are the four questions that we ask. And we have three grants today, Rainbow Play School, Wamba, and the Optimist Center. So who's here from, I don't apologize, I don't Tesha's know. here from the Rainbow. Oh, Tesha, okay. So Tesha, I have your two slides. Do you want to just um, Great. talk Speak to them? Great, from here. Yeah, wherever you I want to you come up here so yeah, we don't have to pretend. Don't worry. And I'm, I, I, it's going to be hard, but try to do, just do it quickly and give us a, you know, yep. as fast as you can. And then we'll ask some questions. Great. Uh, so in the case, <coughs> Rainbow Play School requested $50,000 for our relocation project. We were a school uh, 37 years old at that time. We had 25 students, ages 18 weeks up to five years. We are part of the public pre-K uh, Act 166 program in the state. We had a waiting list for 20 years. We thought, wouldn't it be great if we could finally offer infant care? So we bought the Old Mount Tom School and revitalized it into the daycare that it used to be back in from 1988 to 98. And we have done a gut renovation. It's up to commercial code. Every part of our school, except for the infant program, is handicap accessible. Um, and we, uh, are, we opened in August to 43 students. Mm -hmm. So we increased our enrollment by 18 students. We thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a big um, marathon. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, uh, so we were, li were licensed for 45, wanted to open for at 43 so that we could uh, get into our new space and acclimate with our new programs in a sustainable manner. So that we have done, but we um, exceeded certain things. Um, additional renovations were completed at the school so that we would create a two-bedroom apartment, well, recreate a two-bedroom apartment renovate it so that we could have an income source for the future. We also have a community room that's available on nights and weekends for uh, up to 49 people. It supports beautiful pine farm tables and benches and dishware for a lovely dinner up to 49, matching dishware. <laughs> so it's a, <laughs> I have to say that, I've done the Change the World Kids dinners. So, um, so it's a very beautiful space and we hope for that to also be used as uh, to create a community. We call it, we're calling it the Mount, Mount Rainbow Community Com. And we want to create community. If you are an alumni of Rainbow Play School, you get 20% off. Um, birthday parties, etc. These income streams are going to go A, towards the fact that we, we did have to take out a little bit of a loan to finish our construction process. So it'll first go to pay off our loan, and then it will go to providing a teacher benefit package. Because the strongest thing that a private school has in differential to a public school is that we don't have group health insurance. And our teachers are making salaries that are so little to protect and care for our most beloved people. So that's what those monies are going to in the future. And here are the four oh. specific questions. Well, yes. So yes, we spent the funds as intended. The outcome, we successfully renovated a new location for our school to expand our programming. It was brought up to commercial code and is ADA compliant for the school portion. The metrics are simple, 18 new care spots, five full-time uh, teachers we created, full-time positions, a part-time maintenance person, which will go up the more people rent the community room. And yes, the enrollment pays for the operating expenses for the building, and then the other mm -hmm. rental income streams to pay back the loan, and then hopefully mm -hmm. to create a benefit package. But I do have to say one thing about the EDC. Okay. If you guys did not give us the money, this project would not have happened. Mm -hmm. Our bank needed us to have so much pledged and secured before they would uh, give us the loan for buying the building. So thank you. Uh, I have two, two questions for you. The solar project is slated for next spring, or are you going to do that before the snow flies? Oh, we're doing it before the snow flies. Okay. Um, we just, actually yesterday at 3 p.m., uh, the Department of Public Service um, told the 
Public Utility Commission that we were slated to uh, get our CPG. So all it has to do is be written. Perfect. We've um, done all the permits. Right. So they just have to write it. <laughs> Uh, the other question, uh, tell us about the permanent uh, dedication of the ski hill for the community use. Yes, so in between the solar array and our extremely awesome large playground is the sledding hill. We went out last winter, we watched how people went down, but here's the one thing that we're going to do to improve it, because we watched a fella not bail off his sled, dent his own car, and <laughs> really get quite hurt. So when we... Uh, we might put a sign up showing how you should bail off a sled <laughs> painted by the kids, but we also are going to do our snow plowing so that we can plow an edge so that you don't run into the parked cars. In case it happens to not be the only car, it's not your own car. Other comments or questions? I have one quick comment. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Rebecca would be so proud of you. Oh. <laughs> this is the largest grant that we've made. So. That's great. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, good job. Nice. Matt, you can have this. Hold on. Seth, move over one. Okay, yeah. All right, tell me when you want me to flip them out. Perfect. Okay. Hi, I'm Seth Westbrook. I'm the president of the Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association. This is Matt Stout. Uh, vice president, we're more like co-vice presidents, uh, really. Uh, uh, it's it's a real partnership uh, between between the two of us and our board of directors. So um, we can we can uh, we're we're a chapter of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association, which was the logo you saw below. Uh, we formed in 2015 uh, with 30 about 30 or 40 riders. Um, we've steadily increased. Um, over the years, and especially since the time we asked for for the EDC grant, um, we, we were up to 116 members in 2017, 140 in 2018, and as of you know first of October, we're up to 185 members. Um, so we've grown quite a bit um, over the years, um, and and the the grant from the EDC uh, has been very beneficial. In, in that process. We requested a grant for $5,500 for boardwalk signage, um, kiosk, kind of trailhead improvements, making the aqueduct property more user-friendly and more sustainable in terms of um, trail access when in wet conditions. So we've done a lot of improvements to the trail to, um, to improve the, the sustainability of the system. Um, these are boardwalks. There's Charlie somewhere in there. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Um, one of our great volunteers. But we built a lot of boardwalks uh, with the money over over wet areas, uh, and it's really improved our trail network greatly. You can advance one. Here's an example uh, over a wet area. This this was wet. We we wanted to have the boardwalk anyway. This was also to comply with some state requirements uh, for trail passing through through a wet area. Here's an example of our, our trail um, markers. They're throughout the entire network. Uh, we partnered with the Innovation Lab at the high school. And so these are, these are printed on their laser printer and the high school students did a lot of that. And um, so the grant went to, to materials and installation and, and things like that. Uh, and here's our kiosk uh, and sign printed our map and that we've given out 400 maps uh, since July. I think it's 600 now. 600. Um, so those are distributed around town. We have a little uh, spot in our kiosk. If you're up there, it's, it's on uh, Cox District Road off to the right. Um, and we've gone through an amazing amount of maps right from here, people just taking them um, and going. So. Those have been really beneficial. Our, our trail system is up on Trail Forks, which is a, a digital platform um, that is online. Uh, you can also use it on your phone and it, it um, geolocates if you don't have service, so you can navigate the trail system and there's a little blue dot that tells you where you are. Um, so a lot of people have used that. Um, and it's been really good. We've seen a huge amount of, of increased um, users on the, on the trail network in terms of you know metrics on how this is all working um, the 
I go by the parking lot o meter <laughs> and um, we have a small, very small parking lot. We have permits in place to build a bigger one. But now every time I go there, there's, there are people there using it, which is fantastic. And um, the high school kids use it. There's a, a big high school mountain bike team program. Uh, they train there and, um, you know, and then I, I, I go also by, if you go advance one slide, uh, whoops. Oh, sorry, did I go backwards? No, no. but that's interesting. Just just right right. That's a bridge. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, these are a couple of our bridges out on the property, and you can, you can go ahead one slide. Um, in terms of community and regional impact, we hosted the governor um, with uh, Suicide 6 um, for riding, and just Charlie was involved with that, just an awareness of our community and the riding that we have to offer. Uh, and then just the other day, yesterday, there's a high school mountain bike race with 150 kids um, at Mount Peg as part of the Suicide Six Trail, or um, sorry, Mount Peg and Woodstock Inn Trail Network. So a lot of people coming to our community, and you can yeah, click through. <laughs> Lots of kids on bikes, living healthy lifestyles, making this a better place to live. And you can go one more. This I took yesterday. I pulled in because. <laughs> in terms of economic development, this was after the mountain bike race. This is a family of five, and they had raced, and they were in town, <coughs> and they were at the market on the green, mm -hmm. spending money, and, and headed off to wherever they were. Um, so we really appreciate the grant, and I think it's done a lot for, for our, our community. And it looks, just based on the membership, <coughs> It's just to put a number of people's heads, it's about 60% growth over two years, roughly. So I think that that's... Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and to clarify, membership is people who are willing to pay to support our work, but we build everything for public use. So it's not a members-only uh, organization. So the grants that we received benefited anyone who wanted to use the public. Yeah, I was just using, yeah, I was just using yeah. it as a proxy yeah. for yeah. Cause the purpose, Because what the EDC wants to fund is growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what development sort of means. So yeah. you've achieved that. Yeah. Any questions or comments? What's uh, what's next level for you guys? Is there anything that's on the agenda that you is on your wish list or? Yeah, the next thing uh, we're looking at is the the parking lot. Um, and if you actually, I can mm -hmm. sort of point back if you go back in the slides to our map. Um, so Cox District Road is right here, and this this red line is the the Aqueduct Company property, 358 acres. And these trails here are, are permitted, and this is a future um, growth zone for us, as is this. Um, we're building this currently. Um, growth, growth zone means what, more trails? Meaning, more, meaning what you see here is a permitted trail that's not there yet. Oh, I see. So we, would, we will be building that and we will be building this. Um, we are almost complete with this section here this summer. When you say build, um, does that mean like clear a path for these bike, bikers that go through? Is that, is that yeah. what you Yeah, actually build? I have, um, I can't remember which slide it's on, but one of the kids. Oh, the kids is like, uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah. So we use rakes I and see. pruners and we're, um, we're basically you know, raking a path for them to use. Yeah, That's you're clipping true. out, you're clipping out branches, and you're raking a little. How path. many miles do you have now? Uh, we are, um, I think we're up to nine, and ultimately Ooh. we'll be at about twelve. Um, so, yeah. So we'd like to build out those new trails. Um, if you go back to the map. John. Is that something that um, the membership will fund, or is that something you need more funding for? We we could certainly use funding for it. Um, currently, what we're building is being funded by membership dues and uh, Vermont Mountain Bike Association <coughs> trail grants, which is a grant from the, the organization. So we're 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 sort of we're bootstrapping it, you know, and and I think doing a a good job of what we have um, compared to, you know, other networks that are building with uh, commercial builders. We're doing it a lot cheaper. 
Yeah, I would add to that just a, a note that the grant of 5500 that we took from EDC was used to build exactly the things that we said we would build, the bridges, the boardwalk, the kiosk, uh, printed the maps. Um, but we, we brought the volunteer labor, we matched it with other grants, and if you ask anyone who wants to build a new public trail system what it costs, uh, if you go over to Killington at the Killington Mountain Bike Club at Kent Pond, if, if you ask Courtney who's generously funded the Suicide 6 build out, uh, trail builders are quoting about five to seven dollars a linear foot. So the constructed trails that we've put at, at Aqueduct at about 10 miles is a $300,000 investment for just the trails. So your 5,500 in our volunteer hours with our community of volunteers has put in place roughly a $300,000 investment. Wow. And that's not giving any value yeah. to the land conservation because we have an agreement with the aqueduct that allows us to continue to use it for public recreational use. And if you look at Gilbert Hill, if you look around the state at what it costs to put an easement on land to put, put it into protected public use, it's, it's not cheap. I mean, dollar for acre would probably add another 300000 to this Good easily. Exactly. So thank you for the aqueduct company, but also your grant with our volunteer hours has kind of put in place a public mm -hmm. park. And we don't have, at the town of Woodstock, a parks department. Mm -hmm. There isn't one. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy that this EDC came about. We came about at the <coughs> same time, and the Woodstock Inn at the same time made all of its land available. So four yeah. years ago, no trails. We're up to like 30 miles of trails in Woodstock, and it's it's great. Families are moving here, and people love it. Yeah, good job. Any, any other? Um, this is a rough sport, and it's fun, but there can be accidents. So, like the pond, you sometimes have a life preserver, or you know, a ring or something. Are there any? places along the trails that there's any kind of a first aid kit or anything like that. I mean, you guys get hurt sometimes on these, and it might be interesting to have something that wasn't, I hate to say the word plastic, but was, you know, covered or under a... Yeah, we have, uh, on our kiosk actually, we have plans to have some first aid materials, and then there are emergency instructions on there on, you know, what to do and where you are if you do get hurt. Um, and then on the Trail Forks app, on your, if you're using it on your phone, um, there's a there's actually an interesting uh, 911 function uh. that you can push, and then the first responders get that location, um, and and okay. and have that. And actually, um, several of our members are fire department members in Woodstock and are familiar with um, how that works. And they also have our trail maps in their trucks. And they've trained up there. So. And sell services throughout all of that? Not, not everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know. that, was, that was my question. How do yeah. you sell up there? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It gets. It's pretty limited once you're back in there. But. We we tell people to definitely you know use the buddy system. It's like hiking. It's like mm -hmm. any other backcountry sport. You need to be prepared and be careful. But we have facilitated with uh, the state of Vermont. So all of these trails are in the digital. Uh, E911 system so they can the dispatcher can find these trails just like they can find a home um, and Woodstock Rescue has practiced most a lot of their extraction up at, at, at the uh, aqueduct so the they have a, a, a for a tracked four-wheeler to take up in and, yeah. and help people get out and I'm gonna cut off and yeah. I apologize but it, this is great I mean I think it's terrific so congratulations mm -hmm. <laughs> We're running behind and it's, uh, you know, I, I see now the benefit of talking about the success stories, which is, uh, so I'm glad we could spend the time on it. Um, we have a third. <laughs> no, I was up there. We have, we have a third um, grant, which is the Optimist Center grant, and I just want to explain the process of this, because this is, a, I think there are some things for us to learn. Uh, again, we can reflect on this further. I think we should reflect on it briefly today. Uh, but, but there's some lessons in it, and we may take some time to consider those. Travis, uh, the, found, the, the recipient of the grant, sort of has left. left. I, I did not reach out to get his input. His, his successor, I guess you'd call it, Sebastian Miner, who's a terrific guy, very creative and so forth, 
felt that it wasn't appropriate for him to provide an update because he's really not accountable f for it. He, he's a very open and, and you know to think rethinking things, and I agree with him. It wouldn't be appropriate for for him to come forward and say it. So, the information that he's provided us and that Travis provided. Sally, when would Travis submit that report about six months ago? Uh, it allows us actually to answer the four questions. The answers aren't pretty. Um, and I put it here that sort of says a draft because I've created this from the information submitted. But I believe that the story is roughly accurate. And I think we should just consider what the implications, you know, the lessons are for the future. There was a $36,000 grant. I think it was in 2017. I the, the application wasn't dated. So I think it was. I think it was 2017, it was before our time. The objectives, and I've sort of synthesized this, there's a long, uh, f uh, colorful presentation, but I think the objectives were really threefold. One is to provide physical space for multiple activities, co-working, community meetings, ways for entrepreneurs to build their network. It was to provide services, business coaching, leadership development programs and workshops, and it was to provide what I call brand enhancement that would position Woodstock as a place that's creative and supports entrepreneurship. And the forecasts, were, we, we funded $36,000, which, which went towards the, I think, almost all of the physical build-out. And then the idea is that the membership would be, after the first year, it would be financially self-sufficient. Um, the funds were spent exactly as according requested. There were like 13 categories of expenditure, you know, $720 for a table, and they spent 719 so the funds were spent precisely according to their budget. The outcomes were not achieved. They, their plan for this year, they forecast three years out, was to have $54,000 in revenue. And I believe the actual revenue is about $960. Um, there, n there were, that 54000 includes not just members, but also paying retreats, programs, and workshops. And as far as I know, there have not been any of those, or there certainly aren't any right now. Um, the metrics are available, the number of those things, and the Optima Center is not financially sustainable. Um, and that's, by the way, that is a statement by Sebastian. So, um, I think the obvious question is, what's the status of it now? This is the status of it now. They have one paying member, and I believe no other programs. And Travis has stated that it's not financially sustainable. So, I, this is not, uh, we should not say, well, we made a, what did we do wrong? And, uh, we should be thinking going forward for other grants, for any other grant, mm -hmm. what do we, what do we learn from this? I, so I would say, say sorry, uh, as, as someone who was, I'm oh, sorry, can I just say okay. one last thing? Because I think there was, I didn't evaluate from a metrics point of view the brand enhancement. Yeah. But I think it has achieved that. Huh. Uh, as a remote worker, <coughs> Woodstock, who pays taxes and needs an office space, yeah. and paid uh, for, I was a paying member for a year and a half. Right. Um, so I, I um, will say that the Optimist Center did a lot for me right. for wanting to stay here um, in Woodstock, for making me feel like there was a community of people. I met three or four other um, young professionals who were working there at various times. Um, I held a couple of meetings there, which was useful to me. Um, in the end, I, uh, I also have, uh, there are really great tiny offices above 37 Central, which are actually cheaper than the Optimus Center's rent. So the Optimus Center was charging $150 a month. My little office that I rent um, is $100 a month. I'm a writer. I don't need much space, right. so um, I went with the little one. But I will say that um, it was really important to me to have that space, that for there to be a co-working space. I've, I've said this before in EDC meetings that when it comes to co-working and social media, the framework, the, fr the way that we think about these two things should not be what, how much does it cost to have it. The co the the, the framework mentally needs to be what does it cost the community not to have these things that other communities have and that young people need to live someplace. Um, if we want to attract remote workers to Woodstock, we have to have a place for them to work. And it does not have to be as large and ambitious as the Optimist Center was. Um, it really, it doesn't have to charge, clearly it can't charge as much rent as 
it was charging, um, which is really not that much, but when you have competitive, <laughs> it's a marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I don't think that not having some sort of remote work facility is really an option in the current economy. So I, I, I would argue that although the financial sustainability really can't be argued with, <laughs> it's not sustainable, it's not a good, the project was flawed as such. But I think a project for a remote work facility can't be. What's, what's the prognosis for the existing site? I don't know. Don't know. There was an Airbnb there. Upstairs. 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 So part of the model um, was unsustainable because it had an Airbnb that didn't com uh, comply with the village's requirements. Uh -huh. So it was, we could not spot that. But most of the revenue in the forecast, 54000 this leaves out the Airbnb part. The Airbnb forecasted revenue was uh, was 8000 okay. Yeah, the co-working. Yeah, so. Any other comments or lessons? No, um, just, uh, I, I think we knew when we <coughs> approved the grant that co-working spaces were on their own unsustainable right. yeah. financially and they needed some kind of financial support from a community group. Um, the promise that we had from that one is that it would be financially sustainable after two years based on the Travis's representations to us. After one year. After one year. Proposal. Yeah. And so it was one of those things we said that would be great if it was and we hope that it is and we thought it was important enough to actually go with it. And yeah. there we are. Could I ask a quick question and then make a comment? Okay, quick question. How was Travis supporting himself through the first year or so of this? I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Which leads to me, my comment, which is this. It occurs to me, you're saying there are lessons to be learned. To me, there, are two, there were two flaws in this. The first one was that there was money there for the build-out, but no money to sustain the individual in charge of it for a period of time to allow him to properly market it. Mm -hmm. um, it is a full-time job to market something like this. If you were to do this again, I would suggest that there should be at least some part-time funds built into it to sustain hours put in to market it and get it in but front of people. I think it's actually sustainable. Well, his proposal, well, anyway, just the, his request said that yeah. that part wasn't needed. Not that the marketing wasn't needed, but that we didn't need to pay for it. That there yeah, well, I think, he was, I think he was optimistic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I, for me, by the way, that my <coughs> lesson learned for this has nothing to do with co-working or this particular grant. It has to do with the, um, it has to do with how we pay attention to forecasts. And I think it's very difficult to do that, but I think that where, you know, where there, you know, um, w w let's just take the Wamba grant, for example. There's no need to focus on the forecasts of that. It's, you know, it, it, that's not a, but, but here, there is a need to focus on the forecast. And, and I would say the Rainbow School, there was a need to focus on the forecast. <coughs> 18 additional people, okay. You know, so I think it's really just, we have to, you know, we have to identify, okay, this particular grant, we don't need to spend a lot of time on that or any, but on this one, we maybe we need to dig in pretty well, clearly, because it's, because forecasts, I mean, you know, are, are can, can go off the rails in this one. <coughs> did. Joe? I think there's a, another lesson, perhaps, which is um, maybe your job isn't just giving money, mm. but it's also checking in a bit more often and seeing where the support is needed. Mm. Well, this model was based on WeWork, and that's not doing well either. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, the change in our process, <coughs> which is to spend less hours as an, e as an EDC, reviewing grants so that we can spend more hours executing projects yeah. is partly designed to do that, whether it's checking on ourselves or checking on our grantees. I think that's a very good point. So any other lessons or comments? Yeah, I mean, uh, picking up on what Julia was saying, is, uh, if, if it's not uh, financially sustainable, um, are we set up in a way where we, and it is absolutely necessary, are we set up in a way where we can fund that? Mm. Or take it over. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that the optimist center, as such, is what should be continued. Right, but, but, but yeah, he's talking generically. So, something generically, needs yeah. to be like. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I don't yeah. see this as as dire as the numbers show. I mean, uh, to me, it was a community for a year and a half, and it contributed to my decision not to move out of right. Woodstock. So you know, we're, we're a couple. We have a kid. Right. He's <laughs> we are the demographic that is being right. targeted. I so think that's true of other people as well. I, I agree. I know that's true of us <coughs> to other people. So it's not, these numbers are not good. 
but I don't think that they accurately, it's not a holistic representation of what uh, the Optimist Center necessarily the, did. The, the lesson I take from this, again, has nothing to do with co-working. It just, okay. it, it, yeah. We could have said, yeah, it has to do with a project proposal that has a forecast, that's all. And I'm not, personally at least, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. No, no. These, that's what we also think the numbers are. I think we also need to find out why is it failing? Like, what is it? I mean, I, I've been there at the, in the initial onset, but, um, you know, is it the price of it? Is it the layout of it? I mean, what is it? Why is it failing? And that needs to be established because maybe it can be. I think, yeah. Right. I think Larry's point, but that's though, talking to the members. That, let's not lose yeah. Larry's point. We, we did have at one point, and still I suppose do because we haven't revisited it officially, but we did have a, a concept, maybe just for certain types of grants, that we don't want to be a recurring funder. And I think this, this Could now be. talking about co-working, and housing is going to be another one where the only way perhaps to do it is to be a recurring but, funder. But think about so I think it we have to open ourselves to that. Even as something that you could, you know, we have, my husband and I have had this conversation probably six times where we have thought, why didn't something like the Inn offer day passes to the Optimist Center or something? Not not necessarily what's like in, but different people that there, that right. there could be more synergy to, to use a terrible term right. among the the um, you know. So if the EDC were to rent a very small, like right. not a huge space, a, a small space, minimal expenditure, right. using furniture that we have from the Optimist Center, which right. belongs to us, using the infrastructure that we already own. The well, commitment would be minimal. Mm -hmm. The passes could be. And I know space. Well, by the way, let's, let's let's come back to that when we talk about projects for 2020 because yeah. that could really be something yeah. that the EDC puts on. Our just one last quick comment, comment yeah. is, is that I don't think the EDC should get in the business of managing business. I, I mean, these folks from one did a fantastic yeah. job with the money they did, and so did Rainbow School. We didn't have to go in here and say, okay, what about yeah. the furniture? And what about your layout? And what about your programming? That's not our role, I don't think. It's up to them to take it. But we might, I think to Jill's point, we might be the ones to call and say, hey, this needs attention. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, yes. Yeah, someone, someone, someone has to get a, a more frequent review can, yeah, right, exactly. can generate that. Or okay. help find the right person. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Two quick things. There was a co wickering space at Lincoln Corners, and I don't yes, know still is. is it there. still it's is, yeah. and so it's operation, operational yes. and successful. Yes. And the other thing is, is that in terms of coaching, so that it's not on the economic development's back, you could also refer them to the Small Business Development Center and yeah. mandate a certain amount of coaching. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that and score. And, yeah. 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 A lot of different resources available. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we've now done four out of forty-nine. So we're not, you know, we're not <laughs> uh, done, and, and we may, and we're certainly not done with comp with the co-working or with this notion of forecasting and so forth. But I just wanted to kind of raise these things. Okay. Let's move on. Um, just very quickly, we're we're gonna um, we're gonna run out of some time we can uh, but we're going to go in order because we can actually cut some of the, 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 the some of the things at the end um we had a i i can't remember when when did we do the revitalization meeting was before the last meeting right so maybe this is uh duplicative but this was the voting that took place a month ago for the physical amenities priority. We put forward 24, 25 ideas. I think there were 35 here because the group that met, there were 40 or 50 people came to the meeting, added another 10. The top five were Teagle's Landing, Renovate the Green, River Loop Trail, Trash Cans, and the, the uh, green, the info kiosk on the green to fix those things. So hopefully, I assume that, so, so when we talk about our 2020 agenda, I'm just throwing this out there later in the meeting. Those should be five of the things that are on the agenda for 2020, and we'll figure out, you know, over the next few months whether we can fund it or not. And eventually, at our annual planning meeting, whenever that takes place in December or January, we'll decide we want to do them all. We want to do one of them. We whatever. So this is just a, a summary for those that weren't there. And again, because folks in South Woodside, I don't know if you made it or not. So. And, and this, again, this will be on the website, so you can look at the, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it. it's so small. But I'll give you each another minute or so. N no need for further discussion unless there are questions. Okay. What does fit and finish regulations mean? Oh, uh, um, uh, your house is, uh, you know, not, not up to the standards of Woodstock. You, you need to paint it, and maybe we'll give you some money to do that. 
Okay. Wow. Uh, no, 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 no. This is how I'm moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, BBC has funded the visioning. Oh, I about that one. <laughs> BBC has funded the visioning project, and um, Sally, just, I, be as compact as you can. But it's a very rich. There's a lot of great work that's been done. This is just an interim update. So, Sally, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. You have my slides up. I do. Okay. So, um. I think there was a little notice that we were going to give a presentation at this meeting tonight. It was supposed to be a very brief presentation. <laughs> so it's going to be a very brief presentation. But basically, um, we have the survey results. So we did a survey over the summer. We received almost 600 responses, which was really good. 200, close to three, half of them were Woodstock residents, but we also had part-time residents, people from neighboring communities, and visitors. So it was a very rich. Um, information that we received from this and, and then the main so, so these are some of the slides from we actually have an infograph that is I don't believe has gone public yet but we will have it on our website soon and you, you're going to be able to go in and look at all of this detail and find out how people responded it's all broken down to how residents felt different age groups and it'll, it'll it's very interesting but so I'm just going to give you a few of the highlights here tonight so that we can keep this brief so the main survey conclusions just talk about who we are you know, what do we love and what do we wish for and what do we need? So those were the, the main focus of the questions from the survey. Um, go to the next slide. Um, and he, uh, here again, so what I've taken is one of the slides from this, in, this um, infograph that talks about the goals and priorities. So it's a little hard to read. If you go on, when we post this online, you'll be able to look at how the different response came in according to full-time residents, part-time residents, and non-residents. So this is just one slide, but you can actually tab through and see how they responded. So with, we had some really clear priorities that came up. And so the black line in the middle is affordable place to live and to work. And to, you know, affordable housing came up over and over again, and just affordability was at the high top of almost everybody's list. Um, and then second were the identity and character, and Im improving local businesses and employment for local people. So those were the three that were really kind of stuck out at the top. The next one is infrastructure and town buildings. Um, John, if you could go to the next one. Um, talking about what would make Woodstock better. So here it is. Affordability came up at the very top of the list. I'm almost, you know, I don't... I don't have the raw numbers, so I can't tell you, but when you go and look at this survey in detail, you'll be able to see it. But talking about everything from restaurants to housing to events and activities, and, and for all ages and income levels. New and diverse businesses, people talked about the need for more restaurants and more different types of places to go and do things. Uh, diversity, welcoming, and inclusion. So this is, again, being a community and making a community. How do, we, how do we become a more cohesive community that talks to each other and is very transparent? You know, coming here to South Woodstock where the EDC is trying to sort of spread out a little bit more and become, you know, more known in the community. So this is what we can do with all of our community groups as well. <coughs> and road and infrastructure improvements always come up. I mean, roads were, in terms of the little comments that we received from people, came up all the time. And activities, arts, and venues were um, another high, high on the list. Um, the next one is, is has I don't know how many people have seen. Yeah, go ahead. The next the, one of these bubble diagrams that words that come up lots of times in the course of a of a discussion um, are bigger. So that housing what came up so much, but affordable was also one. Talking about families and young people, these are other words that popped up throughout the survey in people's comments that were, were very, um, you know, sort of focused so people we could, you know, these are things that people were talking about, basically. And I liked a little bit where we disagree. So we talked, we heard about many of the same themes about what makes Woodstock unique, but there were also some areas where there were some real, um, real differences of opinion. It's some value Woodstock's money and prestige, but other feel that the focus on wealth is, is a negative feel that Woodstock is diverse and welcoming, but the balance of tourists and part-time residents is neglects full-time residents. And some feel that Woodstock has become disnified and touristy, while others feel the character and brand of tourism are authentic and unique. 
So these are some of the things that are, are coming up in the survey, and I'll, I'll really encourage you to look at, um, take a look at it. And John, if you go to the last slide, I think. So, so these are, this is one of the posters. So I don't know how many of you folks went to the picnic that we had at Billings Farm, but we had these posters, and I put a few of them up around in the room. It's actually 10 of them. And so this happens to be the one about affordability and accessibility, and I think that's in the corner. So people were able to comment and to make check marks and to add other ideas. So in the course of doing this visioning project, we've been talking about you know, gathering community ideas. At the same time, we've been talking about what's happening in the community and what do people want to see for the future. So all of this information is, has been gathered. We have a vision that is on, <coughs> that is on the website on ourwoodstockvermont.org. So, um, so these headings that you see about accessibility and affordability is one of them. And these are all part of the vision. So if you go to that website, you can actually read the, the vision statement for our community and comment on it. There's comment boxes that you can actually make any sort of suggestions or things like that. So we're doing some final outreach in the next week or two. We'll be kind of finalizing this vision. And the next steps are to sort of get endorsement from the community. So we're going to, um, we've had various organizations that are part of this, but we're looking for broader community support as well. We will have a public event in late October, which will help decide where to put the community effort. So that we'll, we encourage everybody to come and talk about these ideas that have appeared at the bottom, ideas for change. Um, that we can prioritize some of them. They may help the EDC make decisions about where they want to put their money as well. So um, also, this steering committee, we have about eight people that are on the steering committee. Um, and they've been putting a lot of work in it for the last six to eight months. We've been working with a, a group from Bethel called Community Workshop as the facilitator. They have provided, I mean, they've done all these amazing graphics and pulled everything together for us. But when we get to our public meeting in the end of October, they're done. So the real question is, how do we continue this sort of conversation and make sure that some of these projects that people have prioritized happen? And so that's one reason why I wanted to present this to the EDC tonight, is to say, how, how do we make sure that this energy that we have mm -hmm. and all this information that we've gathered um, really gets acted on? And how does the community really get engaged and, and become part of what happens in the future? So that's my spiel. I don't know how long okay. it took. No, but perfect. <laughs> went through it really quickly. Well, but I really encourage well, people to take a look at the website, ourwoodstockvermont.org. Um, dot, dot and if this um, infogram with all that data from the survey is not up, I will make sure it gets up in the next day or two. Okay, any comments or questions? I'm, I was just curious, it ends in October. Who, take, who picks up the torch? From the well, that's what we need to, that's what, one of the things that we're going to be discussing at the end of Who's going to be discussing it? At this next public meeting. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's a big question because part of this was to help prioritize and find out from the community where they, what their thoughts were. And, and that, was, that was the EDC's contribution in hiring this facilitator was to get us through this process. So this is going to affect our discussion in a little, in a minute, in a few minutes on the scheduling and timing of how we set our 2020 agenda. Because if the meeting is, is in October, late October, and we now only have a one year, for big projects we have a one year cycle, we're, we're going to need to, and I think we can take that into account, but we're going to need to move quickly in order to do it. Otherwise, what we'll be saying to the community is at the end of October they say four things are a priority and we say, well, this will be right. September in 2020, right. 2020 right. before we can act on it. So there's a reason for shifting the schedule back a little bit, and which I'm going to propose. So, okay, any other comments or questions? <coughs> I would just say since, again, since we're sort of in South Woodstock and South Woodstock, you know, is, is trying to figure out how you can connect to the village and the people in the village say, you know, we don't think that much often about South Woodstock. One of the purposes of this project, and Sally, you are a great advocate for this, and, and the firm that we hired, we hired in part because they were expert at this, in trying to get a wide range of input rather than the normal people who kind of show up at select board meetings or whatever. And I think we've achieved that. You've achieved that. Yeah. The team has achieved that. So I think congratulations for that. There, there was a brand new Woodstock resident at the parade here in South Woodstock taking input on this whole project. Right, that's right, Fantastic. that's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, which was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, guy lives in Blake Hill, condos. Yeah, I forget what his yeah. name is, but yeah. But yeah. it was fantastic to see him. Great job, great job. 
Okay, good. All right, major work initiatives for 2020. So um, I, I'm just going to go in a slightly different order because I was planning to be here for many hours and ended up having to write this in an Uber. So <laughs> just to remind people, <laughs> we're, 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 we've really got three categories of projects that we're going to consider. We've got pr big priority projects, small priority projects, and small non-priority projects. Priority meaning they're in one of our four areas, housing, marketing, Woodstock, phys improving physical amenities, supporting a local business environment. We've decided not to grant anything in the large other category for obvious reasons. And I think, again, Jeff, I, this, to Jeff's question earlier, this, we've, th this four boxes or three boxes we've agreed to. Um, we agreed that the big priority would be done once, we would, we would try it for a year. We would review applications and come to an annual planning meeting. We said December, but maybe it would have to fall back to January. And I'm going to propose tonight that we do real detailed work plans for those projects in that cell. Um, those are obviously favored in terms of what we would want to fund because they're in the priority column and they're big, they have an impact. The small projects, would, would um, we start now and, and get the applications for our annual planning meeting. They wouldn't require work plans. But we will then continue every other month until the funding for those small projects is exhausted and the priority small projects are favored and the non-priority small projects are less favored. So. so what I wanted to propose, and everything that you're seeing here is, is the pieces of it have been decided, but everything is a proposal. I, I, my approach to brainstorming is to make the answer up and then have you disagree with it. And, and you know, <laughs> as we did, for example, with the process where you guys, we all supported a the opposite proposal from what I had proposed, which was good. <laughs> but I think one of the one of the implications of this upper left hand box is we're going to sort of publish as an EDC, these are our big plans for 2020. And so we can say that throughout the year we're then going to be spending time doing those plans. So we can be telling people all the time, these are the five, seven, and eight things we're working on in 2020. And what I've done here is propose what those things should be. I'm going to call these work streams. And getting back to the discussion of are these subcommittees and does everyone have to be on them and how much time commitment is there, the idea here is that these are the once a year is more than enough that we have so many big projects that there's a broad consensus on what those projects should be and that to waste time on, um, that, that once a year offers us both the opportunity to be more sure-footed, um, to vet projects better, to get the kind of community input that we're going to need. To do plans like this. To do plans like this. Right. So to be more sure-footed and also to uh, actually have time to push them through. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we are continually starting at the beginning, um, I mean, if you, if you look around as someone who applies for big, big grants for big amounts of money from government cities and lots of things, um, they only have them once a year. <laughs> Like the big grant applications are only ever due once a year, period. Well, I, I think we got here because we learned a lot about doing it the other way. And it was very difficult. I'm going uh, to... People I, rushed into yeah. projects, uh, should yeah. have more thought into them, and so forth. I'm going to stay focused on EDC yeah. members for a minute, just because this is... I, by the way, this is a public meeting, but it's also it's a working meeting, and we've been debating this for a long time, and I know people have feelings of that, so I'm, I'm going to ignore the audience for the moment. Larry? Yeah, I was going to respond to Joe that one thing we do have is, at least currently, a fail-safe, that if some just absolutely fantastic thing comes in, two-thirds vote of the EDC yeah. waves that on the process. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, any other any other feelings about for, uh, just you know the the about rehashing the, the once a year because this is now in, everything here assumes once a year. So, uh, once a year for the big for that big box. I think e even if we only do it for one or two years like right. this, the reality is that especially with the visioning, like it, I am convinced by the respondents of but what was Sally just presented that what we have been discussing now for I, I've been on the board for a year and a half almost, it'll be two years in January. And what we've been discussing now since I've been here has been more or less exactly that. So I think the time for rehashing is, is over. <laughs> I, think, I think we made a decision yeah. and uh, we gotta move forward. We can yeah. always make the change in the year, but I think we've gotta try something okay. like this. 
Anyone dis okay, so we may have some slight disagreement, but no, I personally agree. Yeah. And, and for one other thing, because what Beth was talking about, I think there's some confusion. We have to come up with a budget to start with that doesn't have answers to all those things. Is that correct? correct? But okay. but there needs to be a process of coming up with that budget, which I think is where it gets a little yeah. yeah. So just to finish then the process, if I'm not hearing any objections, if I'm ramming this down your throats, so you have to stand up and say that, but <laughs> I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep ramming. Um, the, the, we talked about timing. We were a little bit vague about the timing. S one of you has come to me and said, you think the timing is too rushed because we're changing from a kind of a constant process to a once a year process. We need to give people good notice. And now the visioning process won't give us input till late October. So here's a proposal that uh, we push what's on here back by one month, with the exception of the last point, because that, that can't be pushed back. What we would ask for is simple project summaries for those 11 projects and any community grant applications. All the projects are going to be handled pretty much the same way. A project summary due by, November, by the end of November. We'll take them by the end of October. But, but, we'll, but I'm going to su suggest what's on this slide, which is sort of what we discussed last time, be pushed back by one month. So you have, a, people have now the month of, they have two and a half months to, for us to communicate to them. You've got to get your projects in. If they're over $5,000, we're only doing this once. You've got to get your projects in. You've got to get your projects in. So we don't catch people by surprise with our process change. October 31st, we get all, uh, November 30th, we get all of them in. But as soon as we get them in, we assign one of us to work alongside each community-led project, and one of us is the coordinator of those EDC projects, I, or we don't do them. And so the final, and, and the purpose of that second stage of development is to have the community projects not just come in, but it's, this sort of replaces the ERS committee, that someone on the EDC is going to work with each grantee applicant and say, listen, these are our criteria, I've gone to the website, here's the forms you have to fill in, Tell me what your thinking is. You know, that's very similar to the Rainbow School. Here's how they got theirs. Uh, but, you know, by the way, we turned this one down. You may want to reshape it. Coaching them and so forth. We would get all of the proposals in uh, by, sorry, I think this is, I've gotten this a little bit messed up. The proposals all have, the, the, the summaries all have to be in by November, but they can be in earlier. The month of December, we work to finalize them, and then we hold our planning meeting in early January, not in early December. Okay, so this, what you have written here is, is what we were what it was. Correct, and, and now I'm proposing we add one month to everything except the last bullet point. Yeah, you're calling audible. Correct. Right. Well, no, well, yes, I mean, we, we, this, it was, it was um, yeah. raised by someone else offline, but, but then Sally reinforced it. The select board, Jill, meets to begin, you need our, you would like our input December. by when? We finish our budget in January. Right. So yeah. if you need any of our money, you need to start asking for it before January. Well, but if you don't need that money, yeah. well, I mean, it's, no. well, it's <laughs> say, it, as long as you're willing to keep funding the options tax, it's it's that's not. It's really more of a question of if you aren't going to pay for Teagle's Landing, you want to know whether we're paying for Teagle's Landing because otherwise you would. It's sort of like the village trustees when you had that five thousand dollar expense that you wanted to know if we were going to also right. budget with it. If you need anything in the budget, then you, in, you, we need to know in December and January. Otherwise. It's too late, unless it goes in as, as a special article, right. which it always could. Yeah, no, no, no. We can we we can put in. A, a I think John, you're actually saying the reverse, and you're saying that if the EDC is funding some of these projects, it means that the select board and trustees don't necessarily need to. No, there no, may no, be. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. <clears throat> there may be funds that are required to match them. No, no, no I'm saying something. Sorry, we can tell you um, in net now pretty accurately what, but, well, sorry, the way the, the way it works, as I understand it, is you don't budget the, for the options tax. Right. The revenue comes to us, and then we, we put forward right. the Right. The option tax is um, something that the town and village people voted for, right. and um, if anybody wanted to say that should be changed, they would have to write a special article. Right. 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 We're not going to propose that that so, be changed. So the only reason we talked before about coming to talk to the select board or the trustees was if you wanted us to include in our budgets any funding for any of your projects. Uh, okay. no, in addition to the yeah, options tax yeah, funds. In addition. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, but the select board still has to approve it. Correct. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.
If you come to us in well, February and ask us to include 50,000 to support one of your projects. On top of the options tax. On top of the options right. tax. Yeah. We're not planning to do that. It's, there's yeah. no, there's okay, no so I think, then, I think the argument that then, if that's the case, then this last bullet point isn't a constraint for us other than good management. If we're going to execute during the year, you know, we, we, we might as well have an annual plan not too far into the year. <laughs> so, so the, uh, But I still would like to go back to what I stated because okay. I think that the, the select board and the trustees would like to know if the EDC is funding some projects that might impact their budget. Uh, right. Exactly. Right. So, say, so say we had a line in so there like which was land, to the land. Right. right. We're holding okay. over the $5,000. Right. Okay. Right. right. Exactly. So, so I, I think we our, our proposal, which hopefully will, I mean, this isn't just going to spring forth on January 15th without any prior knowledge. I mean, we can keep you updated. Um, but I think we need this time to do it. And I think I said to the select board when I talked about this project that we were going to try to have our annual planning meeting in December. It might be not happen until January, but that next year we would make sure we were fully aligned. So I think we're, we have the flexibility. We have to sort of do this right the first time. So what I'm proposing is that we communicate to the community and to ourselves Hey folks, we're, all, we're doing big projects only once a year, and we're going to only do small projects until our money runs out, until our money for small projects runs out. So it's, it behooves you to get your proposals into our annual planning meeting. What that means, community and EDC, is that we need a simple project summary by the end of November. We need a full project plan for big projects and a full proposal for small projects by December 30th. We're then going to have a public annual meeting in the second week of January where we're going to prioritize all of those. It's one of the great benefits of doing it all at once, much of it at once, is we can r rank things. We're going to decide on the big projects. We'll decide on the small projects up to our limit. We'll present that to the select board and say, please approve these plans funded by the options tax. If there's any money left over in the small budget bucket, we'll, do the, we'll, we'll entertain more proposals two months later and two months later and so forth. So that's the process. So summary, uh, can you describe, are we talking about a paragraph with a few numbers written down on a napkin? Well, no. we, need to, we need to define what it is, but it's not yet this with all the, with all the due dates and all the budgets. It's something short of this. Right. So and we need to define. Um, I guess the reason why I ask is that first, I'm not sure how difficult a summary would be to put together by the end of the month, number one, by yeah, the would be end of October. Yeah. Right. So I'm just I'm, I'm pushing back on pushing the schedule back. Got it. Okay. And then the second part is that is the EDC then going to vote on the project summaries before asking those people to develop no. the full no. plan? No. We're going to. We're not going. We're, we're not going to. If if someone submits a proposal in the form of a summary, we're going to assign someone from the EDC to work with them. We're only going to vote on it once at the end when we get the really good proposal. In other we're going to work to strengthen the proposal. What if nobody likes the summary? Then, then, I mean, you know, someone proposes a project that we think is that everyone thinks is ridiculous. Right. <laughs> Why put somebody through the ringer of doing a full proposal? Can, can, I, can uh, I maybe I, maybe this this can clear things up a little bit, just by giving uh, uh, using the Teagles Land as an example. Okay. Now I, I've been um, I've had a couple of meetings with Jack Wasi about how to proceed. You know, we need uh, a plan that somebody can bid on. How do we go about doing that? When well, you said to me, you know, what you need is someone to come up with a conceptual plan so that they can have something they can see and actually get, put some numbers down on. And I said, so he says, I'll give you a few names of some people that, you know, would be good at that. I said, great. Then he texted me today, and he said, I'll do it. He's really jammed up. He said, but, you know, I got a window of time. So this is what I'm thinking then. By the end of the October, we can come up as a team with a conceptual plan of what to be bid on or what to put up for bid. And that, and have that, I'm thinking, have that ready or bid, 
either approved or a bid, a, a variety of bids to be able to present by December for us to decide for next year what to do, what to go for. Right. Well, I, I mean, is that is that. Is that, does that help well, clear the up a little bit? It, it, it's a different point than Charlie's making. L let me, let me address okay. your point first. I'm going to come back to your point because I think there's a simple answer to it. Uh, but, but on your point, what you're really saying is you're proposing a different work plan. You're proposing taking out a number of these steps. And I would be, right, like... No, I'm not. Well, I'm sorry if I give that impression. I, I, let's well, go like, back to the other one. Well, like I, solicit community input on the improvements to be made. You're going to go right to... A, a, a conceptual, a conceptual plan. The conceptual plan that somebody can, and, and someone I'm, can react to. Yeah. Okay, fine. Then, then whatever the work plan would be, that, that that's yes, that's fine. And, we and that will submit that by October thirty first, so that you're not. We, gonna, we're not going to approve fund in this model. We're not going to approve funding before any, January. There, there won't be any funding asked for. Yeah, It'll be just this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And this is what we're going to put out for bid. And then in January or December, whenever it's required, we'll have to bid in, and then we can present and say, well, this is the final plan, well, this is what the architect is proposing, and this is how much it's going to cost. Well, but where is the public input in that? Any place you want it. Okay, fine. As long as there's... Yeah. yeah. And does Jack get paid for that? Well, that's a good point. Now, I, I'm sure that Jack uh, asked him that, and he didn't respond. So We don't have money for him. With this yeah, he won't. he won't. And uh, because we're dealing with Jack, project. because we're dealing with Jack, I'm sure part he of the whole project. Wait a minute, just one. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Because it's Jack, I'm sure that once we make the proposal and identify a certain amount of it to pay Jack, he he's not going to say I want my money now before. So he'll wait until, or maybe not even charge us at all. He might do a pro bono conceptual plan. But I think the plan, I mean, you know, that's, I, I, I would, I, I don't see, I, I don't see the benefit of, of, of getting that work done now rather than getting it done after it's all approved in January. It kind of makes it feel a little. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing to approve in January. That's my point. I mean, you know, all he's going to do is something that you can show an architect and yeah. get a bid on. Well, let, let, can we take this offline? Because I think what you're basically saying is, you're saying, okay, we've agreed on this process that I'm describing. Now, here's how we would work one particular project through it. Let's so, just take that offline. I, okay. I, I yeah, just want to come back to that, Charlie's right. question, because I think you're asking a great question. If someone comes with a terrible proposal that all of us at the summary stage say is, is, is not good, um, I suppose that we could say, if no one on the EDC wants to be the coach, then we won't accept it. Yeah, I mean that's sort of a vote, and it's just a, and, and I think by the way I think we should say we're going to bend over backwards to give opportunities for things. I mean you know if if we're not sure if it's good or not, and it's just a simple summary that is being submitted, we're going to give people the benefit of the doubt, and I mean, yes, I'll volunteer and I for it. I don't mind. But, but I think that but if it's if it's really if we feel strongly that it's really not going to go anywhere, then I think we would. I think we have a broad range of interests and right and perspectives represented relatively broad, not hugely broad, but, you know, we can work at it. Point is... If, if none of us yeah. think it's reasonable, if not one person votes for it, so sort of like the Supreme Court or something, if, <laughs> if one person votes for it, then we put a little bit more work into it. Are you okay with that? Yeah, we use short-form bills and long-form bills in the legislature, and if the short-form bills don't get any support, they don't become long-form yeah. bills. Yeah. yeah, same concept. Are people okay with that? Okay, so you were pushing back on October 31st. So Larry, you were the first person who kind of argued for, prior to the Sally's comment about fishing, that, that we needed to give, you know, the community I, yeah, more time. That's, that's it. That is, and I just feel that we have not let the community know that we have these new timelines. It's a new process only for this year. Um, uh, I think it's too, too quick. I think we need to do an aggressive uh, advertising campaign because uh, I would think it would be embarrassing to be sitting here with nothing at all. <laughs> or, or with someone saying I didn't, or I somebody, didn't know. I mean, or somebody, yeah. And, and we can always say, well, it was, you know, in, you know, it's tacked up on the board in the select panel's room or something. But that's, that's not, I don't yes. think that's good. I think what we need to do is say, 
you know, we had the, the Vermont Standard, and we had a... Which we already have. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, by the way, I'm you, you had some other ideas, too. I'm, I'm, I think we also need to go to every town meeting. We need to have someone, I, tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think we should have someone at every meeting making an announcement at the beginning of every meeting, such that it, it's in the minutes of every... Well, that's why I asked about the, board. The, the requirement of the summary as to how detailed it is. Because if yeah. you're thinking about a big project for next year, you're already thinking about it. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what it is already. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, to tease it out by the end of this month. So if we came well, up no, no, with no. The, these if are for small projects, up, too. Because we, the, the, we... Then we should come up with what we're going to be asking for. What, what that right. summary, what right. are the parameters for I that? Agree. And we should send someone to all of the meetings and present those parameters clearly and send them to the right website. Uh, that is easy. I agree. I would have had that today if I hadn't. Yeah, yeah. I haven't open. been in the over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. We need to do that in the next couple of days, and yeah. maybe a couple of you will, will. Let me just take that volunteering right now. Is there anyone who would just like to work with with me on that? I'm. I'm, I guess, I guess. Well, I, I'm sort of framing the summary. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. That's my word, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what we'll do is we'll send it around to people via email and just ask you all to respond. <laughs> Sally. So my question, but you're not assigning um, EDC members to small grants. These are just large grants. Correct. So just make sure that that's clear too. Right. So it's just for the large grants. It's just it's to develop the work plan. It's to do. It's right. to do this. I, I got that, but just yeah. make sure that that's clear that small grants are not, and they, and that makes me think that maybe small grants don't need to be in. Um, I mean, if you're not going to make a decision until mm -hmm. January on them. Why do they need to be in in November 30th? Well, Small sorry, we're, we're now deciding whether to decide in January. Currently, last time we had notionally said December. Okay. But I don't see there's, uh, Charlie, I, I pushed back privately with Larry. We sort of debated this back and forth. I don't see that there's much, uh, <coughs> why not just be careful would be my view and sort of say, Look, let's give people an extra month. We've started to communicate. We had an article. I mean, we have done the Vermont Standard. There were two articles, three actually, if you count the Sally's. There have been four announcements in the last serve about the new schedule because everything that announced this, you know. But we can keep doing that for a month. And by the way, there will still be people who said they didn't hear. Of course there will. Yes. I don't know. I mean, you're, I know. You're, you're, yeah. It's fine. I mean, uh, John, I don't have a big dog in the Yeah, okay, right. John. Qu question. The, the projects on it where you already identified yeah. as uh, major ones for 2020 potential right. projects, who's, who's doing the work up on them? First of all, one of us will be. We're about to. Be. You're all doing. We're about to have that discussion. Someone is going to be doing the, the trash cans, and someone's going to be looking right. at the project of the kiosk. Correct. Thank exactly. you. We're about, in fact, we're. I just want to agree on the process first, so people know what they're sort of signing up for. The point here, as these are work streams and not subcommittees, is if person X has the time, they can join. If person Y doesn't have the time, they don't have to. One person said. I don't want to join, but I'd like to know when they're meeting so I could show up when, if I have the time. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So this is, gives us ultimate flexibility. We do need to have someone saying, I'll, we, I'll coordinate that project. But, but other than that, you know, so, so uh, before we decide what projects to put through the process from the EDC side, are we comfortable with the process that I just laid out with the one month delay? I'm oh, sorry, Joe. Can I ask a question of your work plan slide? So is this what you anticipate the group, the, the team working on in, to come up with in November and December? Correct. Um, okay. And this would be presented, it, so the annual planning meeting is a long meeting where each proposal comes forward and puts, you know, here's our work plan, here's the financial number support we need, and here's the program manager time we need. And so we then decide on, on those so for big projects. And for small projects we do. We just sort of vote and prioritize. We don't. We just look. So at this stage, there isn't any money attached. No, at at the stage when it's presented in January, there is. The, this is there's a page for financial and program manager support. There's a budget. So my question is, how do you how do you present um, a cost if you haven't been out to an architect or a contractor? Well, in this particular you in this particular case, you, what you do the best you can. And sorry, the, the EDC would continue to the EDC would 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 um, continue to approve the spending th throughout the project if it differed from the budget, or even if it didn't differ from the budget. So, taking this as an example, as someone who's not making up the work plan but who would be exclusively voting on it, right? I would ask that 
um, Joe came with, that Joe and Beth and the whole, the <laughs> revitalization group came to the table with um, two different architects having said, this is what I would, cons this is a ballpark figure for that kind of work that is going to be but done. John just said entirely different. No, 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 no. I, no, I think, well, Julia's act sitting in the annual planning meeting now, so what that would be, what that would mean is that if you, if I was the coach or part, well, this is a bit, whoever is the EDC member had better realize in coaching this team, which is their own team, that this proposal, which is going to cost $50,000, is going to need that kind of information to satisfy people like Julia. Yes, exactly. Right? And maybe I'll be a minority for, for requesting that kind of information. No, it might not be. And but, I, but, maybe I might not be. Who knows? But that would be a reason for turning down a project. That's the reason for assigning a coach <coughs> earlier on to say, listen, if this, this is a big project, you know, if it's a $7,500 project, let, let's take Wamba as an example. I, I, you know, they, they estimated $5,500. I don't think, I mean, that would fall into the big project category, but I don't think we would say, was it competitively bid? And, you know, we would, do, mm -hmm. we would just ask a quick question. For Teagle's Landing, where it's, it's much different. So I think that would be part of the I part have of the to say process. I'm still confused. Of what you want by December, do you want somebody no. to identify the tasks that will be done through the year? Yes. And just give a ballpark number on the budget. No, I think it's for, it depends on how big number. the project. So do you want somebody then to start working now, get some really decent In this estimates? project, they've already done that. No, no, but that's, this is, taking this as an example and assume right. no work yeah. has been done. Okay, assuming no work has been done, yes. Yeah. Just so, what Julia so said. I, so I, you, want some, you want that team to go out and talk to contractors and architects and get some really uh, yes. ID. I, I would want that. For me, I would say I contractor. Cut. You want to it, decide a contractor? No. I would get an, a bid, an estimate from a contractor because this process is going to solicit bids from multiple contractors I later. So I would be comfortable approving it. Say, look, we talked to a contractor. They said it would cost between 40 and 50. I think the EDC has enough flexibility in our budget to budget 45. And then we're not going to spend the 45 until you go through step number seven, which is solicit bids from multiple contractors, right. in which case you'd come back and then we would approve it. Thank you. Does that make sense? I think that would fit. <coughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Could, could I ask just same very, very quick was. question? Sorry? Town was the same. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. Very quick well. question. I thought I understood this, but now I'm not so sure. Large projects, this timetable. Right. Small projects, rolling basis? No. Sm small projects, we, will cons we're gonna s we are going to allocate a portion of our budget mm -hmm. to small projects to, to keep us focused on big projects. We're going to limit the small projects. Okay, but that, that doesn't answer my question. And, 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 sorry. and then we're going to take applications for small projects starting at the annual planning meeting. So is and it a can, rolling process It depends. For if we get, let's say we set a 40, let's just say we set a 15% of our budget for small projects, and that's about $30,000. It's about forty-five thousand dollars. Numbers aren't important. Well, they are actually. Be in okay. this process, right. that's that's the whole point. No, but I understand the. I understand and so, if we get forty-five thousand dollars of proposals and we approve them in January, it's not a rolling process. It's done. Oh, if we okay. get twenty-two thousand dollars of, of proposals in January, it's a rolling right. process until we but spend. But technically, 45. it's a rolling process. So right. First, right. Right. Okay. It's first come first. First come. Yeah. Right. Got it. Right. So your two, uh, the first two Sorry. budgets seem backwards to me. How, how are you going to solicit community input if you don't have a... So this is a bad plan. work plan. We should okay. develop good. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Right, yeah. Are we going to first... Are we voting on the timeline? Yeah, I think we probably should, yeah. Are there other comments about the timeline? I think, this, I think we should decide on... I guess we should vote on the process before we decide on which projects we're going to put through it. This, I think, is the last discussion about the, proje about the process, at least for a year. So did you, Courtney, do you have a, a concern or a question about it? Or? No, no. Okay. So, so before we then decide, so any other concerns about the process? Other than that it, it needs to be written down more it. carefully. <laughs> yeah, and I had, <laughs> It's whatever you want to vote for. <laughs> I have a practical oh, question because I've applied for a few <clears throat> grants. Um, if someone fails to submit the summary, are you going to disqualify them if they submit a final application? Uh, I, no, I suppose that if someone without a coach, in effect, because I wouldn't get one, right. 
wanted to submit a final application, I mean, I don't see why we would so refuse if, them. So you could call that first step like a pre-application. I was just looking at one that I've applied for that's very similar. They call it a pre-app or pre-approval or pre-qualification sure. that helps your chances yep. of winning. But if someone still shows up with a great proposal, you, yeah. might, you might consider it. Just, just to be clear, we've had 49 proposals. If you've sort of reviewed more than I have, how many of them would you say un, un uh, discussed among the EDC and unreacted to? How many of them would be great in the sense of a well-constructed proposal? Five. Yeah, yeah. I think that's high. Yeah. But three. No, may have been so, right. so I think we would need to no, make that, you know, yeah. make it clear. But yes, I, I don't see any. That's a very good suggestion. So Is anyone opposed to that amendment? I think it's a perfectly fine. No, I think that. I, 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 why not? The reality could, is that it's not can you, Yeah. The, what again? Uh, my my question was just if someone failed to submit the summary, would that disqualify them from being allowed to submit a final proposal? And I think you may have some cases where someone maybe misses that first deadline, especially in the first year, but still wants to submit something. Yeah. But I you think still that the reality, the the, the, the yeah. what this is attempting to remedy is the reality that we put in a significant amount of work after applicants put in their applications, um, kind of backfilling uh, information that they have left out that we need, that perhaps they the applicant didn't foresee having to answer a certain question that we would be asking. And so we wind up co doing a lot of coaching as is. So in an attempt to, th this process attempts to streamline that. But, but you're saying, and your suggestion fits in with that. It just means that we have to tell people, as you say, that you're, it's, it's going to reduce your chances. Right. But it doesn't eliminate them. So. But I so. think what Julia just said, though, is that if you're taking that final application and there's no opportunity to fill yeah. it in. Yeah. That's your, your, that's your problem. Your chances are much lower. Right. That's your problem. We're not going to we're not going to delay the annual planning meeting because you didn't answer questions. Right. We're not, you're, you're not going to get the kind of hand holding the or right. like the, the kind of like yeah, wait, you good. didn't ask this, you didn't foresee yeah. needing this. Blah, 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 blah. But it's a good enhancement. I, I like that. Any, uh, everyone, anyone object to that? Okay. And then another comment. This is personal, but uh, there's another state program, and they had their due date December 30th for years, and every single applicant complained about the timing of it at the end of the year. And they finally changed it and looking at it now to December 17th. Um, and then, you know, our WAMBA, we went to permits on December 26th. We took 50 people to a public meeting and the town development to review board did didn't not, show up. Didn't get a quorum. Yeah. And I canceled it. No, no, so, so, the time, I mean, there no, so here's the time frame. The time frame is November 30th for the summaries. And they would be presented then in mid-January. So there's no. I thought I saw final app due yeah. December. You did, but, but we're old. pushing. That was the old version. So just to be clear. No. 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 You had no, no. November there's 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 final December. There's a mid-December piece in there. No. Right. So. Okay. Maybe sorry. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if we needed a week before. Sorry. We needed a week <coughs> before the, the annual planning meeting. So if the annual. So we shouldn't set the annual. To restate your point, we shouldn't <coughs> set the annual planning meeting on January seventh. I mean, or why could we not still get final proposals by December sixteenth? By, by we could because because if we're if let's when is our annual planning meeting? If it were to be January fifteenth, then we only need the final proposals January seventh. So before. why not ask for them in December? Like if we've got this Christmas well, what, New Year's period. Well, because then you have a week after New Year's to to do it. Give it's people a break. Yeah. So we. I'm oh, sorry. Give people a break. Well, it's, uh, yeah. What will we do when someone gives us a proposal on January 1st or January 2nd? When I we have a, a say deadline for the deadline. Best the deadline. I, th I think we pick a deadline and stick with it, mm -hmm. and okay. even if that yeah. deadline is a month. I think we need I to think announce that because we've never done that before. I'm fine with that. I've advocated that for a long time, but we've never had a deadline no. that we stuck to. <laughs> Ever. I mean, sorry, at least for the last well, year. Well. For the last year that I've been on. No, it's been ever. Okay. Mm. I, no, I, I'm. It's a young organization. No, 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 sorry, I'm not, what I'm saying is that, is that we just it, that's fine with me. I, I so I think let's talk about so the annual planning meeting two options December seventeenth ish December seventeenth or January seventh, which means we have either way we have the planning meeting let's say the fifteenth or thereabouts. Anyone of January. of January? Anyone opposed to December seventeenth? Go go through the timing now, okay. if you would. The summaries are these. summaries are due by November. Okay, to to give the community time, the summaries are due at the end of November. Right now, end of November. End of right. November, the summaries. 
That's the first. So when the push. final proposal too? Well, uh, another uh, another right, yeah, another reason for doing this to get. Let them walk time through to do it. That. Let them walk through right. it. So summary okay. due at the end of November. End of is October thirty. Right. So mm -hmm. summary is due the here. You know, let me let me get off this page. Let them walk the summaries off. summaries are due the end of November. I would say the final proposal should be due January seventh. Mm -hmm. And we have our annual, that gives us a week to read it, and the final proposal, and then we have our annual planning meeting on the 15th. In November, January 15th. Right, so, so, right, so summary proposals end of November, final proposals January 7th. So you have five or six weeks with the holiday, you know, you have to decide for yourself if you want to work over the holiday, whatever. I think that, that I forgot. They get ready the first week of the year when there's not a lot going on to do it yet. Yeah. I worked over the holiday. Does that work? Okay, there's no strong disagreement. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably won't be there in January. At all? Probably not. Okay. Um, that should not be. No, no, no. Right. The, okay. What are you going to be, Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, any other, any other suggestions about the process? I mean, or sorry, are we generally comfortable with that schedule and this process with the amendments that have been offered? I'd like the motion to approve it. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm. No. <laughs> Any abstaining? No. Just reluctantly approved. Okay. <laughs> he reluctantly approved. It's an RA vote. <laughs> yeah. Let the minutes know that. Okay. So, uh, you know, we. we um, I, we have three minutes left. Let me let me just ask a quick question. Are there any projects on here that you would not, that you think we shouldn't at least start the process to develop detailed plans by January 7th? We might drop them in between now and then. But what I would do, are there any that we should take off this list? Is, there's a, a plan. Somebody put together a plan for the town green because I haven't seen it. Where's Ray? Is gone? Yeah. Ray has put together a notional plan. Yeah. To my eye, the improving physical amenities list is cluttered. I would is cluttered. Yes, I, I would suggest choosing three. Okay. Well, these, these are in order. Fine. These are in order. Second, there's no plan for that. Well, sure. John just said it was. I, I wouldn't say there's a plan. Oh, there's a, a there's a an analysis. Well, yeah, that's going to take a while. Well, work's yeah. been work's yeah. been done on Teagle's Landing, um, and the, river loop. the River Loop the river Trail, river. and the trash receptacles. What if we got rid of the town green one because that's so yeah. big? <coughs> to yeah, that, the, we just voted on that at that last meeting. It's, it's one of the top ones you can't. I have a different, yeah, I have a different suggestion. Yeah. Why don't you take your five suggestions and make them big and long term and short term? And make sure you have a couple from short term and a couple from long term. That's a good because yeah. The green one is long term. Yes. Yeah. And the trash receptacles is short term. Well, the others, I think, are actually short term. Well, also, the, the town green kiosk is, in a sense, part of the town um, green. Right. Yes. Town green. Yeah. It's That's like true. taking a piece of it and together. saying we're doing that, yeah. that piece in 2020 and yeah. not the big piece. Michael, what do you think? If we, if, if, if we combine two and five That's fine. and call it the call phase it, one. Call the green. Yeah. yeah. You okay, then? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was kidding when I, I like dismissed it. it. I agree. We have to. Yeah, it is a good idea. Okay. So we have four. And we rename, we, co we, we combine, develop a plan for town green, step one, kiosk. Can we also rename it village green, just so we eliminate yes. confusion? Sorry. Yes, thank you. I'm surprised Jeff didn't bring it up. Yeah, village green. <laughs> I'm surprised too. <laughs> <laughs> you could call it Woodstock green. There's something that's taken on meaning tell tactic. Okay, so are, are, there, are, there any, there, are there any other things here that shouldn't be on the list? If I'm asking from the EDC point of view, because you, you you can comment in a minute, but uh, I think you and I have discussed develop an ideal business portfolio for Woodstock. Uh, I I think that's a very difficult thing and uh, sometimes a fool's errand. Okay. Um, and we don't need to spin cycles on that. Or creating the right environment for businesses to locate inside of Woodstock mm -hmm. is the right thing we should be doing. So you would substitute what you just said for that? Yes, making sure the environment is right, whether that's regulations, whether that's other kind of stuff. Yes, we, we need to focus on that. But to go out hunting for what we think might be the ideal business yeah. to come into Woodstock, I just don't think it would happen. Anyone yeah. disagree with that? No. That replace the portfolio with that, create an ideal environment for businesses, would yeah. replace that. Okay. I think that's good. Yeah. That's a great idea. All right. Yeah. 
Um, any other things that shouldn't be on here? This doesn't mean that we will do them. It just means that we will plan for them. Okay, so before I ask, as a last thing, before I ask for um, the people to raise their hand, just briefly, um, I, I mean, before I ask for if people want to add anything. Sorry, can I go back? Yeah? Um, per the conversation about South Woodstock, I think that events, I don't know where it would go or how it should happen or what. Events. Yeah, I, I think that. Integrated I'm, marketing plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to push, uh, in this model, the marketing group, it, it needs to consider we would increase the budget from what it is today. We would, I mean, as a starting point, we would say, here's how much money we spent on events, here's how much money we spent on marketing, and it's now all marketing budget, and you guys have to decide, do you want to have an event in South Woodstock or in the Village Green, or do you want to spend money on search? It's all I, I, guess I, I, I don't know. I, I, think I, I don't we should, It's almost ideal to create an environment where people yeah. can come in and help pl plan an event. Because I, I don't think that, I, I think that um, EDC funded or produced be, events yeah, or whatever is a wrong, it, it's no, no, bad no, or supported. Sure, but I think that um, that depends on that event, events really depend on um, the individual coming forward with the plan to do it. Yes. So I guess it falls under, I don't know where That's correct. Like, it, it, well, it's well, falling under. Maybe you add to the marketing budget like Beverly was correct. talking about, so the, the locals do the event. And the EDC yeah. helps with marketing. My view is that the, the, yeah. the, the marketing the group event. has to be the one, I think, has to be the one that says we should or shouldn't fund this. We can have a separate group of people working to evaluate it, whatever, but if it's not an, it, well, I would argue that it, it's, it's the first step of deintegrating what you've all been arguing that you need. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, that first bullet, develop and implement. Could, could yeah. have a couple of substreams under it if, yeah. if that's yeah, the way I, you I want to manage it. Yes, I, I think so. that, that. So, is. the one thing I'll say that has come out of the visioning project is this idea of developing a community culture of people that, you know, work together. So, sponsoring an event is different than trying to engage the community and, and ways that you can engage the community. I mean, they were talking here in South Woodstock about how the community has come together. And I mean, it, it's not just events. It's there is a new culture here. And I don't see adding more events is necessarily uh, going I, to be. So I'm No, I agree. And actually, yeah. I'm rethinking this. And, and I think what Jill said about market, so maybe a substream of the integrated marketing plan would be like a, a blanket grant along the lines of the retail store for incentive program that is for marketing for event marketing that specific groups could come to like okay. could right, be out of outside of grant right. cycle outside of, of anything budget. it would be part of the budget right. and we would give people part of the more bucks budget. for photocopying yeah. posters and whatever right. but I, i'm saying something that's yeah. much more broad much broader than in any event that is it is developing that culture of a community that you know, we used to, when, when I moved here and my kids were in school and there were lots of school events and there was lots of activity in the village and there were things going on, it was, the community was engaged at different levels, which I don't see anymore. And admittedly, it's, it has a lot to do with our demographics and things like that. But I, I just think that there, there's one thing that if we could do as a community is to develop more cohesiveness and sort of sharing in... Right, well, Sally, I just want to point out, I happen to agree with you that, that that would be very valuable. I think it's a question, not to be resolved tonight, of whether that's the economic development. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It's a question. I'm not saying it isn't. Yeah. But I, think uh, well, well, I will I say that we are doing that in yeah. a big way. Not, right. to, not to pat ourselves on the back yeah. too much, but I mean. For a certain group of people. Stuff. Well, a certain group of people, but. Yeah. but Bike people. It's bike people, it's trail people, it's but it's it's not just bike I mean it's bike it's people who ride bikes, but it's a wide variety of the community. In all know. ages. Yeah. Yeah, no, so I, my only point is things like that. We need happen. groups we need yeah. four other groups that are like you yeah. totally but agree. that don't I mean yeah, we, we, we just need to create the framework yeah, that right. opportunity. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 So, so let's yeah. so yeah. let's do the let's agree on the following. Then let's do the following. We've agreed on a process for dealing with big projects for community and ours and small projects. We've agreed that that these should be our big projects. There might be a few more that we want to add. And again, there's no guarantee we'll do these with the with the amendments that we talked about. So this this page changes a little bit. Um, can I, rather than take the time now, because we're running out of time, can I just send an email around and ask each of you 
to raise your hand for one or more of these, or none, it's okay. And we'll start the planning process. Uh, Joe and I will send around separately a few days later, because I'll do this tomorrow, but, I'll, but a few days later we'll send around, here's what a summary looks like, and a pre, what's it called, pre-application? Pre oh, here's what a pre-application looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and we can sort of, I think, if you each communicate with me one on one, then it's not a meeting, and so we can't <coughs> be too complicated. So now we have a process in place. We can start to communicate and announce these things aggressively. I think at the next meeting, we can um, do the budget allocation for small projects, because that could, I don't want to do that in just two minutes. That might be contentious, and I think we, I mean, we don't have to do it now, as long as we've agreed that we're going to set an allocation. I keep throwing out 15%. So hopefully that gets lodged in your mind. Um, and so, uh, so we'll do that at the next meeting. And I think that, uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, in that lodging, 15% of what? Total. 320,000. Oh, no, so it's about 40. Yeah, okay. and yeah 48,000. Right, we get to 320, so we're at 280. Yeah. We're, we'll be at three. My, yeah. my memory says it was, it was around, around $20,000. We're two not okay. Sorry, we'll do this at the next meeting. Yeah. I, that I was I was trying to lobby without lobbying, but apparently it doesn't work. Okay, uh, quick, quick question: yeah. How much money was spent on the small projects in the past year? Uh, all of our projects and budgets are on our website every month. So if I, I don't know exactly, um, mo most were less than five. Most it's no, on our website. Total. Yeah. I mean, was it sort of fifty thousand dollars? Yeah, but maybe a little more than that. Okay. We're trying to reduce small, we're trying to increase big projects. And we may, sure so. Okay, um, Sally, do you have anything? I have no, one, no, nothing for the coordinator's report is published as it is every month. Uh, I have one piece of new business, which actually relates to the co coordination. Can I get two pieces of open oh, sorry, first? Apologize. Yes, go ahead, Charles. I just want to follow up on two things that we've discussed about before. Um, I met with Caroline Hofstetter, yep. I believe her name is, yep. uh, from Nutty Milk. Nutty Life. Nutty Life. Nutty Life, yeah, who makes the cashew milk. Um, just to get an update as to what, where she is in the process, uh, she's in the mill building. I, my, I work in the mill building. So they have put in there, uh, unless you all know what where she, the status of the business is, but uh, the idea is to have a commercial kitchen. She has one renter. She's looking at taking on additional renter. She has not put in the oven yet. She did receive our grants. The facility looks like it's, I mean, we'll get a report from her, obviously. Uh, but the facility is now up with a bottling line. She's having the uh, compressor brought online tomorrow so she can actually work with other uh, bottling beverage manufacturers uh, and do that, which is cool. So we also had a $15,000 loan that was approved for her um, and the business. She is not ready to take that because she does has not demonstrated enough demand for the, an oven yet. So when she has, she might be back. Uh, there was also a question as to what terms the loan was approved for, and I think we, we talked about a low interest percent, not a no interest percent, and communicated that to her. I think Barry had already told her that, but I, I let her know that. Okay. Uh, just the second item was the housing, uh, Woodstock, um, the Safford Housing Project, is that Twin Pines Housing Trust is going to be breaking ground in the spring on four additional units there, and they don't know if there's enough demand to fill the additional four beyond that that they have approved, so they're going to see what the demand is to fill those four units. And that is a different income set that is uh, eligible for Safford Commons. So anyway, different than Safford Commons. Different than Safford Commons. It's, I think, 90 to 120 percent of area median income, which means it is a higher level of income than Safford Commons, and I believe they're for home ownership. Yes. So so they're looking they got money from VHFA and they just got money approved yesterday, I think, from Vermont Housing Conservation Board uh, for the project. So that's looking at four additional units okay. towards housing. Excellent. Okay. Any other old business? Sorry, I mean just skip over. <coughs> okay, for new business, um, I have a proposal to make. It fits very much in with the notion of trying to communicate more actively in general and in particular over the next few months. I've been talking to the Vermont Standard about a EDC column once a month. The first one appeared a week ago and laid out the new project and announced the process and announced the sort of annual deadlines and why we were doing it and making a change. 
Um, I paid for that on the hope that I would be reimbursed, but it was $200 for that size article, which is sort of, I think, a good size article. It's like an eighth of a page. I don't know how many, so it's like, it's this big <laughs> on the paper. Um, uh, sorry? They're charging you for that? Uh, yeah, they are. And they also write a lot of articles. Um, they are losing a lot of money. And um, I thought that if we were to publish something once a month, which I'm not asking for approval for yet, uh, that it would be $2,500 a year and it would be support to an important institution for the town that I think improves economic development in a subtle way and um, would also be good for us to do. What I'd like to, to request, I'd like to make a motion, which we don't have to approve, it to, to test this for six months. One article a month for six months, $1,200. Mm -hmm. uh, well, John, you come to the marketing committee meeting on uh, what's yeah. our date? <laughs> uh, no, October 21st. I would say that this is a premature request. Oh, yeah. You can come back <laughs> next month after the marketing meeting. Okay, fine. Me. And I'll just, make okay, no a, I'll just make a comment. Um, before I was involved in the EDC and I saw the EDC articles that said paid advertising on them, it really turned me off. Okay. I think that that's not a good I image for the EDC. Yeah, I, I would agree. agree. Oh, okay, fine. All right. So the there, there might be other ways that we could support the standard, that, that the EDC could support the standard no, 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 no. as a community. Of venture. course, no, we obviously could do that. I was asking. It says paid advertising. Yeah. It, it doesn't say, say that, but it, it does say yeah. that. It does not, but does if you not. just look at what it says, but it, 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 it does indicate that it is. Yeah. It does indicate that it's paid. It, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, if, if that's, it doesn't affect me that way, but if it okay. affects more than, you know, if it affects some people that way, I, I agree we shouldn't do it. So. We're going to need them to find another way to uh, to continue to communicate. I mean, we're doing a lot. We're, we have the website. We have the articles. We're making ourselves available to the reporters. Um, we're publishing in the listserv, and we can use the listserv, mm -hmm. you know, more. So, um, if if you could just make sure put that on the uh, agenda, so I will, will the, I will withdraw the motion as well. Okay. Anything else? Any other new business? Okay. Sorry for the running over. Thank you all for. Well, you're the only set. Well. Two of you are South Woodstock folks, so thank you for staying yeah, at the bitter end. Yeah, we should get the other one. Oh, you're from South Woodstock? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, Thanks, everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, can we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, is, is there a second? So, yeah. you, just, you can't second your own motion. Good motion. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right, that is for adjourned. Courtney is too enthusiastic. Yeah.